In this video, we'll talk about direct modeling, parametric modeling, and form bodies. After completing this step, you'll be able to use component visibility options, use Fusion 360 modify tools, and use press pull. In Fusion 360, we want to carry on with our trigger with mechanics. At this point, we've created a form body based around the internal mechanics of a reciprocating saw. With that form body, we explore different ways that we can create geometry in Fusion 360. We've already taken a look at some of the ways in which we can use sketches and features such as an extrude tool to create solid geometry. And we've used modification tools such as fillets in order to modify the geometry that we've created. So now we know about the parametric modeling of creating sketches and using tools to create features, as well as the freeform modeling using form bodies to use the vertices, the edges, or faces to push and pull in 3D until we're happy with the shape. But there's another modeling approach in Fusion 360 that we need to be aware of. We're going to spend a little bit of time learning about direct modeling in a future video. But for right now, let's just explore what direct modeling is so we have a good understanding. The first thing that I want to do is I'm going to hide body 4 and I'm going to hide the trigger. We have a lot of components on the screen, so I want to talk about visibility options so we can identify and view specific things. As we take a look at this design, I'm going to expand the internal mechanics, and as I select some of the parts, you'll notice that they get highlighted in the browser, so they're very easy for us to see. This guide block here, for example, I can right click and I can isolate it, so that way I'm only looking at that specific component. If I also want to show additional components, such as the cover, notice that these two bodies overlap. If I need to make some adjustments between them, I can always go back to when they were created. For example, if I want to unisolate this, and I want to take a look at just the guide block, let's hide the cover and let's see what the guide block is doing. The guide block itself might simply just be at the wrong height. We might need to move it. So let's revert its position. Let's use some of our tools under Modify to realign it. So I'm going to align that top face with this top face. I'm going to capture its position, and I'm going to say OK. Now it's lined up where it's supposed to be. And if I bring back my gear housing cover, everything is fitting inside where it's supposed to be. But let's say we decided that this cover didn't need to have these screw holes in it. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to activate the cover so I can focus my attention on it. And if I want to just see the cover, I can always right click and isolate. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select the inside of these holes. And then I'm going to go to modify and use one of my direct modeling tools called delete. Now, Fusion 360 allows me to simply remove those holes by deleting their faces and patching the surrounding geometry. So that was pretty nice. It was easy for us to do that rather than trying to go back to when they were created. And in some cases, that might not even be an option. This design has a base feature, which means that the original history, the location of these holes, that wasn't captured. We don't have the history to go back to. So what if we needed to adjust the size of these holes? Well, first, let's go to inspect and measure and let's see what the diameter is. Right now it's four and a half millimeters, but let's say that we actually needed it to be four. Well, I can go to modify, press pull, and I can select the inside diameter of all four of these holes, and then I can change their size. Right now it's at 2.25 millimeters, which is a radius value giving us four and a half millimeter diameter. But if I say two, which will drop it down, I can now reduce the size of those holes, so now I have a four millimeter hole. So again, using those direct modeling tools without having any parametric history, we can still make design changes. There's more that we can do with this. Let's say that the holes are just in the wrong location altogether. We can use other tools, such as press pull, or we can use move copy. Instead of using move copy on bodies or components, we can move faces. For example, if I select the hole as well as these fillet faces, I'll do the same thing on the other side. 
then I'm going to view this from the top. I can determine whether or not those holes need to be in another location. Now, if the orientation of this is not correct, I can reset the pivot based on another selection. Once I'm happy with the new pivot, I'll say OK. And then I'll move not only the fillets attached to those faces, but also the holes themselves, three millimeters, and I can say OK. Once again, using those direct modeling tools, I was able to not only get rid of the internal holes, but I was able to use press pull to resize them and use move copy to relocate them. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to unisolate to bring everything back. Now obviously I moved the holes and they didn't need to be moved, but since that was parametric, I can go back and suppress or delete those if I want. So for example, I'll right click and suppress that feature. So now the holes are back where they're supposed to be. From here, I'm going to activate the top level of this design. I'm going to go back to a home view. I'm going to bring back the body for our handle that we created as well as the trigger. And then I want to save this before moving on. 